Mikkel. Mikkel, you've mentioned kind of already about kind of just everything that's happened throughout this season, but just in the last 24 hours, just how have you processed just everything wrapping up and what was just kind of it like to play that last time with some of those guys on the court? Yeah, um, yeah. usually probably around this time, about this week, kind of everything, kind of, you know, I kind of think about everything, about the whole season. But, um, yeah, past 24 hours, it's kind of, it's kind of knowing that it's not going to be the same locker room, you know. That's any team you've been on that's in college, that's on winning teams, is just how it is in any pro level, any team, like, it's, it's rare where everybody comes back. So kind of just cherishing that, you know, pretty close to everybody on this team. So just knowing that not every single person is probably going to be here next year. Um, so just kind of try to cherish it and, you know, be around my, you know, be around my guys, you know, because summertime comes around, everybody be different spots, and you know, you try your best to link up with everybody and see people in different cities. But it's just, but knowing that pretty much the last time that everybody in that locker room going to be together. So, how has this year impacted you, and just how have you grown individually? Um, man, tough. I think it's just really tough, just personally. Um, I think I feel like I got I got a couple gray hairs, you know, just you know wanting to win and compete and being frustrated on a lot of things, frustrated on my own self, how self play. Um, but I think it's just you know you just got to go through it sometimes, you know, you know you you have expectations, you have goals, and. You know, sometimes you you know that you don't succeed in them. Sometimes you don't reach those goals. You know, life has a funny way of just humbling you a little bit. And um, but it's also it's always for you know the greater good. I think that's what it is. It's also how you you learn from it. You know, I feel like this is a time where you get better. You know, when things ain't going your way how you want it. These are the time, the months where you put in the work. Um, I really get better. Honestly, that's just. That's how it goes, you know. I feel like a lot of people will get better when, you know, things don't go their way and they, you know, things you don't succeed in when you want. So it gets you in a different mindset to lock in on. So that's pretty much what I take from it. You know, you just you, you got to always find the positives in, in times like this, and um, that's how I look at it. Mikael, when we were here in the preseason, you said that playoffs was the goal for you guys and so now as the season is over do you look back and say that this was a I don't know failure is the word but do you feel like how do you feel about just kind of not meeting that goal when so many guys on this team are accustomed to being in the playoffs yeah I, I mean yeah, you could say it's a failure 100 percent. you know that disappointment all that um it's tough you know especially seeing the teams that are in there and you just know the talent we have and things like that um yeah, I don't think there was a, a part of my body, you know, anything in my brain that thought I'd, I'd be sitting right here talking to you guys like this, you know, before this season. So, um, yeah, it's definitely tough, you know. Didn't want this, but um, you got to learn from it. You know, you got to be better. Um, it's the biggest thing I take from it. And then for you, was there maybe a moment or a situation where you could feel things starting to change a little bit, maybe that – December game or that stretch in January when the losses started to add up a little bit, was there a, a kind of a turning point you can maybe point to where things started to change? Um, no, but I know what you're talking about with the Milwaukee game and losing in that road trip. Yeah, that was tough. I think that was a part of it that didn't help. I think that kind of for the players, you know, I know I was hurt from that. I was pretty pissed off about that situation. Um but that's just part of it. That's a stretch, but you could, you know, I think I've failed at that part, you know, mentally. And that's why I was talking about the gray hairs. I think I failed in that part mentally about, you know, I was telling pretty good, you know, up top mentally with things. And um, I think I pretty didn't do pretty a pretty good job this year. Um, I think I let my emotions get to me. And, you know, I know f for me it's, for the greater good, I know what my purpose is. You know, I want to win and, you know, be in the playoffs, stuff like that. So when things, you know, maybe, like, wasn't looking right and things like that and I get really super frustrated, at least I know in my heart that 
what it was for. You know, it's not no selfish way. It's just wanting to win. And um, but I know I definitely had to be better. And that's another thing I'm taking this year. When, like I said, with the goals and things, and when things get tough, you might get, you know, hit with an uppercut. And how am I going to react? And I think I didn't do a good job um, with that. And I think it's just personally on wanting to win so bad. So when any little thing didn't look right or went wrong, it kind of, you know, ticked me off even more. So I think just being better mentally. Um, but I just, you no, know, I think that obviously you think of that stretch, but I think it's just throughout the whole year, I think we could have, I don't have no other moments, honestly, that I could think of, but probably that. For you, um, I mean, as a guy who's a foundational piece here, whoever the coach is next year, what kind of traits would you want to see that coach have? Yeah, um, man, probably what everybody wanting to coach, you know, be very detailed and being a player's coach as well. I think that's the biggest thing, too, um, just talking to guys and, you know, getting feedback and everything. But I think more just, you know, I think for me personally, just the detail aspect, just being detailed on both ends. And, you know, you want to play, you know, have that moment in the season where, you're not really thinking anymore. You kind of know what we're doing offensively and defensively. It's kind of that free, just mindset to go out there. And um, that's probably the biggest thing, just to know at one point in the season where, like, it feel like it's just, you know, second nature, just knowing what we're doing out there. And it's like, you know, that's not that's not even an issue anymore about figuring out what coverage we're in or, you know, what, what are we running and stuff like that. So i probably say just detailed, 100%. Mikhail, a lot of people heading into this season believe that you could have been an all-star for the first time in your career. Obviously, that didn't happen. But when you look at how your game changed from the beginning of the season to the end, how do you view the season in terms of what you can bring to the Nets moving forward? Do you think you could be an all-star one day for this team? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't say that's a – like a goal of mine is to be all star, but I know what what comes with it. I think my biggest goal is winning, and you know, being the best player I can be, and to help lead and win, and um, and that's what comes with it. You know, all stars and stuff like that. So, um, hundred percent. But you know, it's just it's gonna start. I mean, it starts now. Obviously, just with these these weeks off. You know, just taking a little break. But yeah, hundred percent. You know, that's. My mindset's got there be the best player I can be and keep improving and getting better at pretty much everything I got to, you know, be better at and um, just get ready for next year. During that stretch last season, you were obviously one of the top offensive players in the league for like a 30-game stretch there. And then second half of this year, not just you, but the whole team was struggling. But yeah. when you evaluate yourself, you know, how do you kind of – reconcile or like what do you see as the biggest difference between what was working for you and happening during that 30 game stretch and then yeah. during the second half of this year where it wasn't really happening um hmm. mm. think of I'm trying so last year I gotta think the office was different a little bit different you know, how we were playing, it kind of was how I was coming from Phoenix. So that was kind of a good thing where what I was, offense I was in and I got traded to was kind of like, kind of it was pretty similar, pretty same type of structure. So just going off that, but I don't know. I think obviously, obviously it's a different year with, you know, um, with defensive coverages and different, you know, things like that with blitzes, doubles, all that. But um, I don't know, I think it's just, like I said, I think I just didn't have the right, you know, headspace. I think I was just too mental on myself on wanting to win so bad and being so frustrated on things. I think it kind of took away from everything. And, you know, I played a game with joy. That's always how I played. And I think, you know, when I got people asking me and talking to me about, you know, you don't look the same and that's strictly off my emotions. That's, you know, that means something. That means, you know, that I'm not there how I want to be. And, um, but I think that probably put a toll to it a little bit. You know, obviously the coverages and, you know, being a, a main vocal, you know, seeing or, yeah, main piece and people throwing different coverages, obviously that's part play a part of it. But I think 
just my headspace. I think mentally I just wasn't as strong and positive as I should have been, and which brought brings it down to the office event and how I'm playing and being so frustrated. And then I think just towards the end, just being so beat up mentally and then lacking confidence, I think that, that hurt me as well. When you uh you talk about, you know, a detail oriented guy and so forth, does does Kevin Young fit that kind of mold or is he like a, a different kind of coach? Okay, uh, Kevin Young, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a detail dude. 